Konnichiwa. Today, we're going to continue with the narrative lessons that we started last week. And this time, I think we're going to be able to proceed a little faster. So, let's refresh our minds on the story we've read so far. Aruhi, Arisu wa kawa no soba ni ita. One day, Alice was by the river. Onei-chan wa tsumaranai hon wo yonde itte asonde kuranakat. Big Sister was reading a boring book and did not play with Alice. Omoshiroi koto ga nai to Arisu wa itta. Omoshiroi means interesting or amusing. Koto means a thing. And in Japanese we have two common words for thing. And they are mono and koto. Now, a mono is a thing in the most usual sense, a physical thing. A hat, a book, a pair of glasses, Mount Fuji. Koto is a more abstract kind of thing. An affair, a matter, a circumstance. So, when we say, is there anything in that box, we mean mono. And when we say, the thing is, we usually mean koto. So, omoshiroi koto ga nai means there's nothing interesting going on here. No interesting circumstance. Ita, iu, means say. And you can see it's like a mouth with sound waves coming out of it. But the important thing to notice here is that little particle to. There are actually two to particles. One means and, and it's very simple. The other one is what we call the quotation particle. And that's what we're dealing with here. When we quote someone as saying something, or even as thinking something, we use this particle to. It's kind of like a quotation mark that you can hear. As you see, we use the square quotation marks in Japanese, which are the equivalent to English quotation marks, but we also use the to. So we don't just say, nothing interesting is happening, Alice said, we say nothing interesting is happening to, Alice said. Now to is a very interesting particle structurally and we're going to look into that a little more deeply in a few minutes. Sono toki, shiroi usagi ga tori sugita. Sono toki, sono means that and toki means time. So we're literally saying that time. But this is a bit more like saying just then, at that moment, at that time. So we use it just the way we use other relative time expressions. We don't need to put ni or anything else with it. We just state the time and then continue with what was happening at that time. In this particular sentence, the point of sonotoki is that just at that moment, when Alice had been saying that there was nothing interesting happening, just at that time, this happened. Sonotoki, shiroi usagi ga tori sugeta. Shiroi means white, it's an i adjective. Usagi means rabbit. And tori sugiru is made up of two words and it's doing something that we are going to see over and over and over again in Japanese. It's using the i stem of one verb to attach another verb to give it extra meaning. So toru means to pass through and sugiru means to exceed or go beyond. So, tori sugiru connects those two words together. Toru, pass through. Sugiru, go beyond. And it means passing by. A white rabbit passed by. Sono toki, shiroi, usagi, white rabbit, tori sugita, passed by. Futsu no usagi dewa nakute. No, futsu means ordinary and the rest of this you already know. Dewa nai means it isn't, it wasn't. And we're putting it into the te form because this is part of a complex sentence. And we looked at complex sentences last week, didn't we? So futsu no usagi dewa nakute. It was not an ordinary rabbit. Choki o kite iru usagi da. Choki means a vest. Kiru 
means wear. So kite iru means to be wearing, to be in the act of wearing. And datta, of course, is the past tense of the copula. So this is, it was not an ordinary rabbit. It was a wearing a vest rabbit. It was a rabbit that was wearing a vest. Usagi wa kaiju doke wo mite kaiju doke is not a word we're going to encounter all that often because there aren't many of them around these days but it is an example of something we're going to see an awful lot which is that in Japanese as you know we can modify one noun with another by marking the first one with no or na which is a form of da but we can also when we're not just modifying one noun with another but forming a new noun we can simply ram them together we don't have to modify them in any way the way we do with verbs we turn them into the e stem but you can't do that with nouns nouns don't have any stems they don't modify in any way so when you're putting two nouns together to make a new noun you simply push them into each other is this the same as what we do in english with words like seaweed or bookshelf you just push two nouns together to make a new noun so the parts of this noun kaichu okay kaichu is a slight unusual noun it means in one's pocket or the inside of one's pocket and toke is a very common word it means clock or watch we have the same word for a clock in Japanese, whether it's a small one or a big one. So kaiju doke is a pocket watch. And the reason that we say doke instead of toke is what Alice in Alice in Kanji Land calls ten ten hooking. And this is that when you push two nouns together in the way that we're doing here, and the second one begins with a sharp sound like t or k, we turn it into its equivalent dull sound, like D or B. And of course in Japanese you do this by adding those two small marks to the kana. So TO becomes DO, TA becomes DA, KU becomes GU, SA becomes ZA, etc. So for example, AO is blue, as you know, SORA is sky, and when you put them together, we get not our sora, but our zora. So we put a tenten onto that sharp word. And Alice calls that tenten hooking. It's as if those two little points, those two little claws, hook into the word before it to turn them into a single word. It's a thing you're going to see very often. And just in English, you can't do this with any two nouns. But there are a lot of nouns that are made up of two nouns. And so long as one of the nouns isn't a slightly unusual one, like kaichu, they're very easy to understand, just as they are in English. And then we have osoi osoi to itta. Now, we're going to look at what this to actually does. And as we get into more complex sentences, three-level compound sentences like this one, we start to see how useful it becomes. What to actually does structurally is that it takes whatever it marks, and that could be two words like this, or it could be a whole paragraph with all kinds of other grammar going on in it. It takes whatever it marks as a quotation and turns it effectively into a single noun. So a to carriage is a white noun carriage marked with to. And we're going to find as we go on that this is used not only to mark things people say and things people think, but all kinds of other things. And we'll have an example of that a little later in this lesson. But this to structure is essentially making a quasi-noun out of whatever is marked with to. And a to then makes it function as a modifier to the verb that follows. When it's a simple quotation like that, the verb is going to be you to say. It could also be kangaeru to think or omo to think or feel. But it can be many other things too, as you're going to see in a moment. So this is the structure of a to marked statement of any kind. Osoi, osoi, to itte hashiridashita. 
Osoi means late. And in order to make it a sentence, obviously we have to have a, a zero pronoun here. So the rabbit is either saying it's late or I'm late. In the Disney version, of course, it was I'm late. Osoi, osoi. I'm late, I'm late. We don't need to say to usagi wa itte this time because we've got usagi wa at the beginning of the sentence and this is a compound sentence. So the second half of the compound sentence has the same main carriage, the same subject as the first half. Osoi, osoi to itte. The rabbit said, I'm late, I'm late. And that Ite is another compound. Ite. So this time we have a three deep compound sentence. The rabbit looked at his watch. He said, Osoi, Osoi. And then he did something else. Hashiri dashta. Hashiru means run. And dasu literally means to take out. But this is a combination we're going to see very often in Japanese. Once again, we're using that I stem, which is the main connecting stem to connect hashiri to dasu. And what does it mean here? Well, that dasu, when it's connected to a verb, means that the action of the verb erupted. So we can say that someone nakidashita. Naku is cry, and we connect the I stem of naku to dasu. And nakidasu means burst out crying. We can say warai dashta. Warau is laugh. And if we connect the eastern of warau to dasu, we are saying burst out laughing. And in this case, what happened? The rabbit suddenly burst out running. It broke into a run. So, saki wa kaichu to ke wo mite osoi osoi to itte hashiri dashta. The rabbit looked at its pocket watch. It cried, I'm late, I'm late. And it broke into running. Chotto matte kudasai to aresu wa yonda. Chotto matte kudasai is a phrase you're going to hear a lot in Japanese. Sometimes the kudasai will get left off. What does it mean? Chotto means a little. Matte is the te form of matsu which means to wait. And kudasai means please. It's actually connected with kuraru, which we talked about last time. It also refers to giving down. It's please give down to me. Please lower down to my level. So that's a polite way of saying please give. But it's not just giving a thing, just as with kuraru and ageru. It's not just giving a thing. It can also be if you connected to the te form of a verb, giving the action of that verb. So you can see it's very related to that kureru and ageru that we learned last week. Chotto matte kudasai. Now, because this is so common, very often when we put a verb into te form and address it to someone, it's kind of short for te kudasai. Chotto matte Kudasai means please wait a little. So she's asking the rabbit to stop. She wants to meet with the rabbit. Chotto matte kudasai to aresu wa yonda. So we've got that to particle again, the quotation particle, which we need when we quote anything. And then yonda. Yonda, what does that mean? Well, we've come across yonda before, I think, haven't we? And it means read, read in the past. That is the ta form, the da form in this case, of yomu. But in this case it's different. It's the da form of yobu. If you remember from our te and ta form lesson, the nu bu mu group of verbs, nu, bu and mu ending verbs, all form their ta form with nde and their ta form with nda. So both yomu and yobu have the past form yonda. Fortunately, we're not very often likely to get reading and calling mixed up, are we? This yobu means to call, to shout out. It can mean call in any of the senses that call is used in English. You can call someone a name, 
You can call an Apple 11, but you'd be wrong. Or you can call out. Chutto mätte kyta saito arisua yonda. Please wait a minute. Call Alice. Demo. Isagiwa. Pyon pyon to. Hashiri tsutsuketa. Demo means but. Hashiru means run. And we're going to leave our pyon pyon for just a moment here. Tsutsukeru means to continue. So again, we've got this form of taking the i stem of a verb. Hashiru becomes hashiri. And then we add on to it the verb tsutsukeru to continue. So usaki wa hashiri tsutsuketa means the rabbit continued running. Pyon pyon is something we're going to find very often in Japanese and that is a doubled word which is a sound effect. There are lots and lots of these in Japanese. Shiku shiku which is the sound effect for crying and some of them will be literal sounds and some of them describe states of various kinds so we're going to be meeting a lot of these later. Pyon pyon is almost a literal sound effect. It's the sound of a small thing jumping along. And you'll hear this an awful lot. I do at any rate, but then a lot of my friends are small things that jump along. So pyum pyum is the sound, or not quite a sound. It's, you know, if it were an anime, you'd probably hear the sound, wouldn't you? Pum, 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 pum. But in this case, it's not necessarily a sound you hear, but it's the the feeling, the sound-like feeling of a small thing, a small animal, jumping, jumping, little jumps. So, because it's a rabbit, it didn't run the way you run, it runs in a little jumping, bouncing fashion, the way rabbits do. And the thing to note here is that we say pyong pyong to. So once again, we're using that quotation particle. In this case, we're using it to show how the rabbit ran, because this is kind of technically a sound effect. We're quoting the sound the rabbit made in order to tell the manner in which the rabbit ran. It ran in a little jumps kind of manner. All right, so next week we'll find out what happened. What do you think Alice might have done? No looking ahead. So, as you see, we're getting better, aren't we? It took us an awful long time to get through two sentences last week. This week, we got through a lot more, a lot more quickly, and I think we've learned a lot again. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below, and I will answer. I'd like to thank my Gold Kakeshi patrons, my producer angels, who make these videos possible, and all my patrons and supporters on Patreon, and all my supporters everywhere, and I'd like to thank you, for attending this lesson. Kore karamo, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. Class dismissed. <laughs>